So this is 2 Corinthians 6, the scripture for April 2nd. Some scholars believe that the last part of this chapter was part of uh, Paul's letter of tears. You may remember, as we talked about from 2 Corinthians 1, that m many scholars believe 2 Corinthians to be a patchwork assortment of letters. Uh, some believe just two letters, one going from chapters 1 to 9, the other going from chapters 10 to 13. This is one of the theories that uh, consider 2 Corinthians more of a patchwork, uh, uh, an amalgamation of different letters. And um, this thought suggests that from verse 14 of this chapter through the first verse of the next chapter, so 6.14 to 7.1, that this uh, was originally part of Paul's uh, more angry letter, more, more frustrated letter to the Corinthians. And at face value, this makes some sense, I think, because uh, if you look at verse 13 of chapter 6 and then look at verse 2 of chapter 7, they both flow into one another about uh, Paul wanting the Corinthians to know and understand his heart and the love that he has for them. And some of the style of uh, 6.14 to 7.1 uh, is a little bit different than Paul's usual style. Regardless, though, of, of the source of this passage, although it's neat to think through, it, it is part of the scripture that we've received today. And therefore, it, uh, it is under the inspiration and the authority that we, we give Scripture, regardless of if it was actually written by Paul uh, in, in his, this correspondence to the Corinthians, or whether it was written elsewhere, or by somebody who, who wasn't Paul even. Now, in, in chapter 4, Paul discusses generally the idea of affliction. And we could talk generally about affliction and say a bunch of very brave and courageous things. But here in this chapter, Paul delves more into the specifics of the afflictions that he suffered. Several of these that, that he suffered in order to bring the gospel to others include hunger, imprisonment, beatings. I think many American Christians today have uh, the, the belief that if you are taken into custody and imprisoned and beaten even at the hands of law enforcement officers, that for some reason you, you must have deserved it. Um, I think that, that it's easy for American Christians to believe this because we have deep faith in our justice system. Many, some of us do anyway. But I think that that trusts way too much in the state and way too little in God. Paul, in serving God, was accused of many things and was ultimately executed at the hands of the state. And I don't know that we can say that he deserved that if, if true righteousness were to win the day. Jesus Christ, our Savior, ministered for three years, uh, not in secret, in the open. And at the end of those three years, he was crucified and, and given the death sentence at the hands of the state. Uh, so so I, don't, I don't know that um, the way that American Christians often look at law enforcement, I don't know if that squares with what Paul's saying here in Scripture, that sometimes you can be imprisoned and not actually deserve it. And, and I think that it's, it, we need to be so cautious when we just automatically assume that the state judges with correct judgment. As Paul said earlier in his first letter to the Corinthians, we will be called to judge angels. So we need to be competent in judging these cases on our own and not just contracting that out. So Paul also, he doesn't just share the affliction piece of what's going on. He also shares the deep joy of following Jesus, the things that he really loves of purity, knowledge, patience, and, and, and even more. These afflictions and joys, Paul says, can really only be shared with fellow Christians. It's sort of like, maybe imagine two people meeting one another and, and getting to know one another, and then all of a sudden realizing they both love Star Trek. Maybe you've seen this for, for more of a, a niche uh, show or a niche obsession, or maybe you've experienced it yourself, when all of a sudden you know, oh, we share all of these similar interests and all of these similar beliefs just because I know that this person watches this same show as I do. Suddenly you can speak the same language, you can share the same joys, and if you watch Star Trek, you can debate the finer points of Star Trek lore. This is how I see 6.14 through the end of the chapter fitting into Paul's thought. In, in, in relationships with fellow Christians, there's so much you can share that, that you can't with folks who don't believe. Um, Paul mentions a, a, a idea of Beliar or Belial, and, and this is another name for Be Beelzebub or Satan. Those who've not embraced their new life in Christ 
whether they know it or not, serve death and sin. And, and the personification of sin and death is this Beliar, Satan character. Uh, now, I wonder, what persecution have you experienced in your walk of faith? That's all for 2 Corinthians 6. Uh, tomorrow, uh, the 3rd of April, we'll be looking at 2 Corinthians 7. May God bless you in your reading of Scripture.